The acreage burn now has doubled in size just overnight. So that's a real sign that this fire is huge and is out of control and it has shut down Interstate 84. You know, this impacts so many families, Dave, in terms of what, you know, the day. Morning of Archer Mountain. This is about five the pictures on social media. Just too dangerous to drive. Side of it. It's so uh, it's still been been pretty pretty to it's the recurrent narrative that we see so often around wildfires is event driven, it's uh, image and spectacle driven. So it is focusing on a severe fire happening in the moment um, and the risks to the public from that fire. That's, that's the dominant narrative. Officials say a flying ember jumped the river, sparking a spot fire near Archer Mountain in Washington. Level three evacuations were underway before dawn. Um, there are some researchers who have talked about disaster myths, and these are things that are repeated in print and, and other forms of media. But uh, ideas like after a disaster, there's, there's a lot of social upheaval, there's a lot of rioting, there's, there's social discontent. The research actually shows that there's a lot of social cohesion during and after fires and other types of disasters. There's also a, a huge focus on issues of damaged buildings, for example, homes being burned down. And of course, when there are fatalities, there's a lot of focus on death or injury. But there's very little coverage in the print or other media of other types of impacts beyond, say, homes that are burned down, cars that are burned down, or injuries to the public. still tends to be a, uh, a focus on those incidents, you know, particularly the spectacular incidents, you know, those, those kinds of tragic conditions that, that spike interest for the six o'clock news kinds of things. And you know, I, I understand that that's the profession and that's, that's what you have to lead with and all that kind of stuff, but it, it does tend to raise the singular nature uh, of fire and the panic side of things. And so that kind of six o'clock news phenomenon, even in, in 2019, uh, feeds that to a certain extent. Fire officials shared scary anecdotes though from Warrendale and Dodson communities. Both of those towns apparently very at risk. A lot of acceptance that we need to have a better understanding of the social science side of things. I think that there's still a lot of focus on risk communication in terms of how can we communicate to the public exactly what we want them to think. And I think there's still some room to be done in terms of not just how can we communicate to the public, but how can we learn from the public as well? Um, how can it be this sort of bi-directional relationship uh, between society and fire managers and the agencies that manage most of the large fires? We have to stop thinking about fire as one little incident in time that's gonna happen. It's a natural, cyclical kind of thing that revisits forest over time and space. But we're gonna have fire next week, we're gonna have fire next month. This, this is gonna be in the news again next year. We don't know exactly where, uh, but this is a reality. There is no future without fire and smoke.